Nothing else matters. We're not in this for the music. Nah. Music is for other people. We're in this to have the biggest possible plugin collection, even if we don't use them. That's not what they're for. What they're for is when you click on compressor, you see something that goes for at least 30 seconds before you can pick one, which you don't remember what it sounds like because you have 700 compressors. That's why we're doing this. Um, and uh, today, um, I thought that I was um, going to save you some of that scrolling by um, um, showing you know, some ideas or maybe of what is uh, used by um, people who are in it for the music. I'm kidding. I'm in it for the plugins. Um, but I've in invited other people who, who are in it for the music and who prioritize um, sound over geekery. Uh, and so, uh, but to open the festivities, um, I thought that I would show you um, one of my things, uh, and um, and also so that I can test that stuff works because the internet, it is broken. Uh, so um, let me see if I can share my screen without uh, us going back to the dark ages. I have here the the session. Share screen. Boom. Uh, and you should be able to see my screen now, and I will focus it so you no longer have to look at my ugly face. All right, so you should be able to see my screen. Um, and I have here um, the session that actually is our um, sugar session, the session that I put together with tracks for my records to um, basically uh, test sugar and other plugins that we are working on and uh, i removed all the plugins so that you don't see the trade secrets but uh these tracks are really great and so the my i'm going to keep mine very short because we have some really badass people coming on uh and I, i'd rather have my friends talk than me you see me talk too much so um i have here uh, an 808 on the it's coming from a record i'm working on right now so first let's test to make sure it works So can you do, give me the comments, make sure that you heard this, did you hear this? It works. You have no idea what it takes to make this stuff work. Um, so anyway, uh, so this is an 808 and uh, and it's, uh, the producer is awesome. Uh, and he sent me this thing. But you notice that in, with most 808s, you get sometimes you get the attack, and this guy put the attack on. But very often, it, the 808 is so slick, right? So slick that you cannot um, you cannot hear it in the mix. Uh, so uh, one of the reasons um, I use Sugar so much, and so this is a shameless self plug, obviously, but I love this thing because I spent so much time working on it with Guillaume and the team. Um, I I use Sugar. I mean, you know, Sugar is designed to do this you know, um, three-way thing, um, way, four-way thing where you have lows, uh, mids, highs, and air, and you can push those those um, those segments separately and change the tone. And that's what Sugar is primarily made for, an enhancer, if you will, and it works amazing for that. But when I use it most these days um, is the saturation. So uh, this is the 808 without the saturation. And then I can I can push the drive pretty hard. So with this, the 808 will actually cut through the mix without being louder. So this is without, with. So the the harmonics generated by the saturation are actually helping you make that 808 read as itself. It doesn't, in the mix, it will not change the sound. It will read as itself, but it will come through and you won't have to fight so hard to make it go. And then you have the added benefit of being able to push the bottom. Like this. So we started here. We're here. And the other thing that's cool is you can turn the filter, you can turn the filter in on steep and get rid of the super, super bottom. Mm -hmm. 
and and uh, with like just three clicks a track that was really cool like this now it's like this yay pro tools one more time uh without with and he gives that gnarly that that extra layer of harmonics plus the bottom plus the controlled uh boom and all that is done with just this plugin i use this pretty much on every mix right now i'm mixing eight songs for a band called jack mac and they are kind of like a international pop stuff very influenced by there's a lot of like soccer grooves but there's also a lot of like justin baby ariana grande super big uh, vocal layering and it's very thick and everything is based on 808s um and um and so without this i couldn't i couldn't mix that record and make it sound that way within those constraints same on the lolo zui record uh, and stuff like that so that is my click that so on. let me click to close this and let me get back live I'm a trained professional, folks. Don't try this at home. Okay, there. So that was my trick. Uh, but I thought that today what would be most fun <clears throat> is to invite other people. So I'm going to invite our first guest. And they have surprise guests, so I thought that'd be fun too. Uh, and I'm inviting my first guest. And, and so uh, hopefully this is going to work. Usually, yes, it's working. Hi, Vance. Holy cow, that just happened. Yes, it worked. It's amazing. It worked. Good it. Everybody say hi to Vance. Hi, Vance. Hey, How's it going? What's up? Life, life is beautiful. And it never, is. Yes, it is pretty it's amazing. Right here in Nashville, Tennessee, the sun is out. Um, I spent a good portion of the morning digging a hole in my backyard. That was kind of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, no meat. No need to know what I put in the hole. No uh, need. No, no, no. And I, uh, I, authorities yeah. do not get to need to be involved. But, nope. uh, you know, uh, no. Uh, no, I, I'm putting in some drainage. It's exciting. Oh. Around yeah. the, yeah. So that's it. But, uh, I, yeah, it's beautiful. How are you? How's everybody? I'm great. Everybody's how's great. Your, uh, how do you get a haircut? Dude, you just oh. like. I washed my hair. It's different. Oh, you washed it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, wow. maybe I should do that more right. often. Good yeah, French. Good yeah, French. yeah. Yes. Once it's my, it's my yeah. once a year, once a year thing. So, um, so Vance. Yes. You're you're a console dude, but you do use plugins. Yeah, that's that's her. Hi, gorgeous. How you doing? Yep. Um, yep. So, I do. I use them all the time. Matter of fact. Yeah. So, um, so what, um, so Vance is because of the internet, Vance is uh gonna have to remote control me. I'm gonna show you the plugins he wants to show you. Um, cool. so which so one do I'm, you? I'm gonna talk about a couple that are a little off the radar, uh, mm -hmm. that I really, really, really love. Um, and the first one is this PSP is the name of the company, they're a Polish company. Um, it's called Lotary, like rotary but with an l and an apostrophe right mm -hmm. and we should try this first on obviously the the it, it's a it's a rotary speaker plugin mm -hmm. all right so mm -hmm. obviously we should try it on something other than uh an, an, uh, organ. Organ. an organ all right yeah so i have uh, i have things, hold on. give me one second give me one second this yeah. is technically challenging you know I'm, I'm still learning the whole like you know engineer <laughs> working on it um so i'm gonna i'm gonna minimize oh, yeah. this enough and you yeah. should be able to see it oh yeah beautiful and let me see yeah. if it's working here one second uh the winner is here yeah great electric guitar would be perfect yeah that's what Pick i thought Pick it up on fast so we can make sure we can definitely hear it. Yeah, give me one second. Uh, Pro Tools is being Pro Tools. Uh, I need a second. 
Um, so t t what? tell us, while I try and tame the beast, tell us what you like about this plugin. Well, the thing I love about this is that of all the plugins that sound like a Leslie, and mm -hmm. there are quite a few of them, this one is one of my favorites. And the reason is that it's very in-depth, obviously. As you can see, there's a lot of knobs and little buttons and things. Yeah. Um, if if you were to just crank up the volume on your sound, everybody there at home, so don't hit anything, Fab, you would notice that you can hear it running. Now, now if you can hit the speed button, Fab, uh, on the program, that one right there, speed right next to the lever. Yeah. Now, cool. Yeah. So now, if you just if you just for a minute, we'll just be really quiet here. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, no need to do that. Over, um, so just come straight over from the lever. There's a button that says mech. It's a knob. Uh, just come over from the lever. Keep, yeah, there you go, right there. Yeah. Now, you know, see that button? Turn that all the way up, that knob. Oh, that's cute. Now hit the slow. Uh, slow. Nice. Okay. That is awesome. You guys heard that? This is amazing. Whoop. Yeah. All right, cool. Now, here's what I normally do. I turn that all the way off. Okay. <laughs> yes, That's awesome. By the way, the, the, the track sounds like this first. Uh, you cannot hear? Okay, so people are complaining they can't hear. Let me jack up. Um, a little bit of level, Vance. Uh, Masticator. Um, I lost you, Vance. We lost Vance. Ah, you're back. Mm, Great. Yeah. Yeah, uh, somewhere here on my, yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, so we good. Can you save me? All right, cool. Well, I'm just going to do this from my phone. Uh, Go for it. Much harder on my phone to see what's going on here. Okay. Um, All right. So, so obviously, let's just put some guitar through it. All right? Yeah. So this is the raw guitar sound. Okay, and then now, this is, can you hear it? Ben? Yep, I got that. Great. Cool. So now let's hear it with the, with the, with the plug in it fast. Yeah. Ooh. Now hit it to slow. Now, here's where this plug in is awesome. If you go to fast, right? Mm-hmm. If you go fast and then just pull the lever down, you can get it in time, tempo-wise. Wow. So many things that you can't do in, um, in, a, in a thing. Oh, I bet, Alan. I bet it's super cool. So the other thing I love about this is down at the bottom, there's a bunch of controls that are for um, uh, balance. Like you can, you can just use just a little bit of this or a mm -hmm. lot of it. And it also has a width. So from time to time, I will use this on slow, right? Mm -hmm. I'll put it on the guitar track. I'll turn it way down, and I'll crank the width way up. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just add it in so that uh, a mono guitar gets a little bit of modulation, but way out to the side. It's like way, oh. way out to the side. That is fun. Yeah. That's a fun trick. Now, if we just keep this at slow, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go. There's there's another plugin I really like, and we're gonna put it. If you can just put it before this plugin, yeah. And it's called. It's a PSP plugin called Springbox. Yep. There you go, and it's coming right up. Mm -hmm. Springbox. Yeah. Now, Springbox is basically a pair of springs. Super cool. And it's a super cool sound. So do me a favor. Uh, let's just bypass the loadery, right? Yeah. And then and then um, there's a preset, which are kind of down there at the bottom. 
Yeah, coming right up. I'm dealing with um, yeah, no, I see that. unhappy computers. Okay, mm -hmm. so yeah, go for it. Preset. Okay, yeah. so there's one called I think it's called dark and wide or something and wide or something. Smooth like and smooth yeah. and dark. Smooth and dark. Let's try that one. As soon as Pro Tools works again. Yeah. Uh, let me get rid of everything so that everything is working here. Mm -hmm. Let me bypass lottery. Yeah, and what's great about this is it has a dry wet, but it's 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 levels. So in other words, like you know, yep. you can you you can you can turn the reverb into the dry signal. It's the same as a balance, but a little bit different. Yep. The other thing I really like uh, on this is there's another um, there's another little preset that's right below that uh the the smooth and dark yeah uh let's see here pingy pingy yeah wow cool now put lottery on after that okay come on dude yeah uh, let me see what his problem is oh come on anyway uh yeah. It's yeah, it's it's just uh it's really finicky today. Yeah, um, it's all right. All right. I got one one more thing. Now, let me ask you a question. Obviously this works with guitar, right? Yeah. So now do you have a, anything like a background vocal, anything like that? I should. Um let's see. Um I have or even a lead vocal. I mean, you know. Yeah, I have know, one let's, of those. let's get crazy. I have one of those. Uh let's see this guy um and let's listen to him it's in french you don't mind i don't care combien de larmes de gouttes de sel et de ciel noir de voix qui appelle okay so you want me to put the string verb yeah so just just put both of those on the vocal right okay, yeah i can do that Oh. And then and then we're going to go for the third, the coup de grace. Vas-y. And that is going to be an awesome, my favorite free plugin in the world. And that is Valhalla Freak Echo. And this is the part where I failed. Oh, yeah? Should not yep. get that in? It doesn't. I uh, mixed it up with Ubermod because uh -huh. I'm French and it all sounds the same. Uh, <laughs> but um, um, so what would Freak Echo do? Let me well, bring Freak, it. Freak Echo, Freak Echo is a is a modulated uh, delay stereo delay. What's awesome about it? It's totally free. Uh, it's um, it's kind of cool for a couple reasons. One of them is that when you when you start moving the the frequency, which is a like a uh, uh, modulation frequency it starts mm -hmm. to split out wide also uh -huh. it's great for it's great for um idiots like me who are kind of blind because you can make that simple ui as big or as small as you want yeah that's great you know what i mean and i use this thing all the time to do just subtle left right modulation um i know it's gonna sound weird i, I have used this uh, on room mics before mm. to just to just do something weird with them when they're like they send me just a mono room mm -hmm. mic i'll just use a little bit of this and i mean i'm talking about a little bit and just modulate it a little bit to get it to split out so it goes from a mono to a stereo mm -hmm. uh, i've also done exactly the same thing with lottery uh to do a cool effect or like lottery on the cymbals so like there's a spot, boom, 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 you know, so it spins <laughs> around or something. Um, I just like it on all the things you normally wouldn't put that stuff on. Okay. Uh, Pre-Gecko is really cool on like a smashy drum track. Mm -hmm. It's kind of cool. Um, it, it's, it's a little buggy, uh, but it's free, so I could care less. Exactly. There's I'll a little bit of, there's a couple bugs in the, uh, breakpoint automation, mm -hmm. but I don't care. Three and and everything else he makes, the guy at Valhalla, everything he makes is great. It's awesome. It's absolutely as great. As far as PSP goes, if you go to PSP's website, 
Um, I have been an owner of everything that they own mm -hmm. uh, for probably 12 years or so. Mm -hmm. I bought the first thing was vintage warmer, which was really the first really great sounding, like kind of mastering limiter. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I just sort of fell in love with, they have a great PSM 42 mo uh, mm -hmm. mod or, or, you know, they have a pair, a stereo 42 called the 802, I think is what it's called. Mm -hmm. Really awesome. Um, tons of great stuff in there. They're, They're great. old. I, I had like their old stereo pack and their old mix pack. Mm -hmm. There was some really cool, weird, you know, yeah. sort of like They're very creative stuff very, yeah very really creative. really 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 stuff and they got a new thing called uh the infinna strip i think that's got mm -hmm. all kinds of little modules i bought it the other day and haven't used it yet okay cool man well thank you very much I'm yeah gonna... well you're what you're most welcome i just like to throw out weird shit because you know everybody you know i mean what do i use the most of 1176s ua you know ua 1073s all that stuff I use that in the box to get that sound. Um, I'll tell you what's a really great plugin is the the uh, Galaxy Echo uh, in UA. I use that all the time. I'm, I'm using it as we speak. Mm -hmm. um, I love that one because you can, if you do a mono to stereo, you can put the, the reverb on one side and the echo on the other. And that's, that's dope. Super dope. awesome. So, all right, well, all right cool, lots. man. Well, I know, I know some of the big time guys you got coming up and... Uh, they're awesome. I can't wait to hear it. Okay, thanks, Vance. And uh, here, here's um, here's Fred. Everything who's coming in from Montreal. Hey, Fred. Hello. Hi, how are you? Man. See you guys. Be safe. Cheers. Cheers. Can Cheers. you hear me well? Yeah. Perfect. Um, cool. So everybody, this is this is Fred. Um, those of you who are Pure Mix members know him, uh, and he is a badass house producer. That well, not just house. You do a lot of dance music in general, right? Um, yeah, house has been yeah my flagship, I guess you know electronic in general, but house yeah house deep house disco yeah great. Um, so what do you have? What are you going to show us in the in the context of what you do? What what are your favorite things? Let me uh, can you share? should I go and share my screen now? You should share your screen. Yeah, let's share my screen. Uh, and here it is. And magic. Wow, is it? Yeah. Oh, wow. It's working. I love it. Um, so, by the way, we should say that we're going to do the whole thing in French, right, Fab? No? Yeah, absolutely. In French. <laughs> okay. Here's my, my idea for me. Like, it's not, I, it's not about, like, fancy plugins. It's about those plugins that I use all the time. Like, I think about 80% of the time I gravitate around the same sort of, you know, 12, 15 plugins at most. Yeah. And I really like simple uh, very simple plugin. So, uh, just quickly, because you were talking about 808s before, I can probably talk mm -hmm. about two plugins real quick that I love uh, for 808s. Um, mm -hmm. This is not a secret. Oops, it open me. Okay. Well, the uh, the DBX, the DBX 160. Sorry, yeah. it's a little confusing with all of that stuff. Maybe I should. Uh, they all they all sound different. So you, um, this is the DBX 160 from UA. UAD, yeah. I don't. I didn't test the other ones. I really like this one. Uh, I use it on just about everything except for vocals. But just today, someone told me uh, that apparently it's pretty good on vocals. So mm -hmm. anything that needs a little um, sort of, you know, attack and and rip and transient a little bit, I use it. So I think it's really good on kicks. Like whenever I have a mix that you know, all of a sudden it's like. Well, I know the kick is there, but I just can't hear it. Oh, I, I can feel it, but I, you know, it just, it's so weird. As you know, as you once said, the house music is 99% kick. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so you gotta have that. Anyways, in check. So what I would do is uh, often I will just open this on a, on a bus and use it as parallel and send and being really mindful of this, you know, there's only really one button here that I use as a threshold. There's not many settings on here. And uh, yeah, just be mindful that it can it can become a little snappy sometimes if you go too too far. But just putting it on on the um, on a bus on, as a send, mm -hmm. I think it does miracles, and so does 
this one and i know you like this one a lot too oh that's my baby and as you can see it opens up by default to this preset called drum fattener that just works and i really love it so what I, what what are the settings how 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 did you come to this um, oh, setting and everything i didn't this is a preset oh okay i know and it, this is this is kind of what i want to kind of uh advocate today it's like you know to go with the, the things that are easy and simple it just works i like it uh, so same thing for this well i use it on as an insert often mm -hmm. but i love it as as a parallel especially on things like kicks again when it's sort of like you know you can hear it but it just mashes with everything and you want it to be in its own kind of not space, because that's not the right word, but you know, you want it to have this, to poke out a little bit and have its own um, universe, let's say, anyways. So I would say these two, like, you know, I just wanted to follow up on your, uh, mm -hmm. on your idea of 808. Oh, then why not talk about, uh, about this obviously as well, which is another very, uh, um, easy thing for percussions and kicks and all that uh if the other ones don't work i love to use a transient designer i have different ones mm -hmm. reason why i like this one is because you got a parallel mix okay so yes. you, you could put it on an insert uh and and do exactly what i just said you know but uh but as an insert anyway so Anyways, I'm not gonna really gonna talk too much. Uh, we've got we've got these sorted. So um, one thing one thing I think it would be important since you deal with kicks a lot and yeah. uh, so say you have a kick yeah. and fr from from the 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 discussion you just started um, when you have a kick on the um, in your track and you cannot get the the kick to come through, but if you bring it up. Then your balance goes to shit. So what do you do in that case? Which ones of those plugins would you use in which order? If I need body decapitator, mm -hmm. yeah. If I need a uh, punch and attack DBX, mm -hmm. uh, if I need to control the you know like the length and things like that, uh, the transient designer most likely. See, see, that's the thing. It's like there's not one solution, um, and that's what I wanted the guys to hear. Okay, <laughs> so, am I, uh, sorry, am I continuing or? Yeah, we we are we are we got a little bit out of sync. But basically, okay. what you get, what you guys just heard is this is um is you know there's a lot of people who say oh you know uh, one plugin does it all uh, or one process does it all, but it's really a question of uh, a thought process. And so you can hear that uh, the way Fred thought about this is, uh, well, uh, if I need body, I use um, the capitator for the saturation. If I use, if I want to have attack, then I use um, the DBX 160 because it has a slow attack and thus it lets the click through. And then if I want to control everything very precisely, then I use my transient designer. This is why these things are important because you may not be able to come up with this you know, when you buy Decapitator, it doesn't tell you, oh, this is great to fatten bass drums. You know, it tells you this is a really badass distortion. And then you use those plugins to come up with tricks um, to uh, to make things go. So let me invite our next guest who just showed up so you can say hi. Uh, do you oh. have something else? Do, do oh, well, have I, had, something? I, had sure? I had a bunch. But can I can I just oh, another sure. show oh, us yeah. another one? Show us another one. Wow, just another one. It's you know the other ones are gonna feel bad. Uh, yeah. we're, we're, this is, this is this, sorry. People are digging this, so we're gonna do it a lot. So save save some ammo okay. for the next edition. Okay, okay. This is uh, this is a, a free plugin from Isotop, mm -hmm. um, which is supposed to replicate the sound of vinyl, and this is not why I use it a lot. I always have all my settings here, like you know turned off, like everything. I'm not looking for any of that. But somehow I realized that this year, 2000, 1980, 1970, 1960s, I really like those filters on uh, on vocals, for example, and other things. But it I don't know exactly what it does. It's supposed to replicate the sound of the record. 
in, in those years. And it's not super drastic. It's very, um, it, it is really just like a, a nice filter that kind of has a bit of a natural compression as well. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you want that sort of radio like uh, effects on the vocal, but you, you, you don't want it to be so tinny, just that sometimes you'll just like, again, like, you know, put the sound in its own universe, you know, like make it like very unique in the mix, you know. And uh, yeah, it stands out. I like it anyway. So that's, that's a very good way to put it. Put the sound in its own universe <laughs> by giving it real identity. That's really what it does. I love that thing too. A different I color. Yeah. I couldn't believe it was free. Um, so we have. Um, okay, I have to shut up now. <laughs> the, yeah, we, you do because we have another guest coming on. But this is really, really good. Um, can you stop sharing your screen so I can show your face? There you go. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so uh, thanks a lot, Fred. Hey, uh, thanks, let, let me introduce you to Ah, oh, Reed. Yeah. Reed is Reed is having. We're waiting for Reed to reconnect. So, um, uh, the next step is Reed Shippen. Have you met Reed before? Me, no. No, oh, you're about to. Um, All right. <laughs> so we have a, an on Starcast today, but uh, we also have the internet, and the internet is um, it's its own oh. beautiful thing. Here's Reed Shippen. How are you doing? Can you hear me? Yeah, very well. Sweet. What's Hi. going on? Life is good. Life so, is good. Fred, this is Reed. Reed, this Hi. is Fred. Nice to hey, meet Fred. you. How are you? Good and you? Good. Cool. Good. Montreal versus Nashville. Oh, there uh, you go. man, I've never been to Montreal. I'm dying to get up there. I hear well, it's you, amazing. Yeah, you like food. You should go. Yeah. It's really nice, yeah. Sure. It's All right, well, I'll, let you, I'll let you talk. I'll stick, stick around. Thank you so much. For Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Bye. Ciao. Bye. What's up, boss? What up, man? How are you? I'm okay. I'm dealing with a lot of delays, so it's really difficult for me to wrap my head around what's happening when, but I'm a professional. Yeah. So I'm pretending nothing's happening. Um, so what do you want to show us today or talk to us about? Well, you know, I mean, it's like... I've been thinking a lot about the fact that there's like six million plugins to do everything, and um, and I get in conversations a lot about, um, you know, most digital EQs are exactly the same, unless somebody puts some sort of distortion or some sort of functification in it. So instead of owning like three hundred EQs, I kind of want to own one EQ um, or two EQs, and then the rest of it is like the fun weird shit. So. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I pulled a few up. Of course, I, I realized that when I have Pro Tools open on my machine, it doesn't want to pass the audio through to this. So I just took a screenshot, um, and we can talk about uh, we can talk about some of that stuff. But I, I was kind of thinking about just going through a couple, and there's more. I just grabbed like three or four to talk okay. about. Um, yeah. How do I share my screen? So share right above, um, right above your head. Up oh, there it is. Share screen. Okay. Yeah, the one that says share screen, that's the one. Yep, that's the one. Yep. All right, application window, Chrome tab, good Lord. Um, screenshot, there we go. Sharing. All right. Um, okay. So here's some weirdo plugins that I enjoy. Um, on the mm -hmm. bottom left is this thing called Shine Chilla. It is really, really complicated. It, it, that it, Pretty much everything Vox and Go has done uh, you know, is obviously they're like hardcore um, coders. Um, it's super complicated. I have no idea how to use it. So I, uh, I just play around with the, um, uh, you can still hear me, right? Yep. Uh, great. I just play around with this thing. You can break point this line and drag it up and down and, and change which harmonics you're messing with. But the, the bottom line is this thing sounds amazing on synths. Uh, synth okay. pads, analog synths, like it makes stuff cut and you can get it all buzzy and then, you know, blend it in underneath the synth and it's really, really fantastic. Really? Um, definitely worth messing around. Right. Yeah. I want to try that. I, I love yeah. that because I'm always look, tr looking for things to to enhance synth sound and I tend to use a lot of sugar for some obvious reasons. Of course. Um, uh, but uh, 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 that's very interesting. Okay, I'm going to check that out. Yeah. You can do all kinds of horrible damage with this plugin. So... 
And then this, so Powers, Powers Music Company, the Kazrog True Iron thing, I really mm -hmm. love it. I use it a lot on vocals. I use it on drums. But one of the really fun things to do with this is to put like four of them on one track and <laughs> just obliterate something with it. Like I love doing that on like drum rooms and then just blending a little bit of that back in um, or doing it on some kind of crazy parallel and, and using it for that. Like it's a really fun, it's a fantastic plugin on a, a lot of stuff, but it's really fun for that. Um, I remember back in the day programming on an Akai 950. Um, it was, I believe, a 12-bit sampler um, or the 912-bit, oh. no yep. filters. So this is um, this is a really cool plugin that kind of emulates the way the 950 sounded. And what you end up doing is running drum loops or percussion or stuff like that through it and cranking the input gain. And then the filter and the audio bandwidth obviously lets you mess with how far you want the filter open and, and uh, how much frequency bandwidth it let through. And then you crank the output level way down. Um, and it makes drums sound really, really cool. Um, okay. So, and so what are the controls? Uh, let's see. Input, bandwidth, filter, output. That's so I love it. Who makes this? Um, who does make this? I don't know. Google RX 950. Okay. Because <laughs> let's be real. The the R, the that Akai sampler was one of the worst sounding things ever, which is highly desirable, obviously these oh, yeah. days. Yeah, no, it was that and the SP 1200, and you know they had bad filters and you know cheap sampling, and it made it made drums sound really unique. And we hear right. that stuff all over Tribe Called Quest and De La yep. Soul and all the classic hip hop stuff. I loved, yeah. I love, I love when it was like you sample your bass drum. And then you got the bass drum, and then you got <laughs> behind it. Yep, yep. totally. totally. <laughs> oh so man, good. this is great. I didn't know that it existed. You just made my day. Oh yeah, like, it's so I good. So love it. Caveat, and if these guys are listening, be careful. I have run into occasional problems using it on parallel where there might be a little bit of a delay. So the delay compensation may not report exactly correctly, or maybe I'm just not using it right. But um, it's really, oh. really cool. And then this thing, hey. go ahead. After you. I was just going to say, I discovered this recently, and it's Shoot. it's just a clipper, um, which I used on a, on a, like a pretty operatic, um, like synth and guitar heavy rock mix recently. And it's just, just dime the drive. Like if you want to make a vocal, just cut through a track and sound a little bit nasty and, you know, it's not like a warm distortion. It's a, it's a really kind of like, I don't know, I don't know how to call it. Like it's, it's, it's like a clear distortion instead of a warm distortion. But I just dime the drive, and you can play with this when you're cranking it. It doesn't make all that much difference, but it puts a really cool edge into things like again, synths, vocals, you know, stuff where you need it to just cut a little hard. Um, this brand, really. this brand is very interesting. Uh, Andrew, uh, Sheps. Uh, turned me on to their um, you know, limiter. I think it's called Elevate or something like that. And it's actually it's the guys from the really awesome people at Eventide. That's that's their other brand. Um, wow. Yeah. And uh, and you, I mean, if you like this, I think you will dig um, uh, the limiter. Andrew uses it a lot. I've been I've been testing it um, because just to try new shit. You know, mm. um, and so um, yeah, that it's a the, the the UIs are a little weird, but they they are it's like really intense amount of control, uh, mm. but it works great. I recommend you try that. Um, okay, it's a it's the same brand, um, and it's pretty awesome. Um, well, that is awesome. Let me bring um, another guest. Maybe somebody you know. Maybe you don't. Let me see. Is it the chefs? I keep hearing about the chefs guy. I'm not sure who that is. No, no, it's not that chef's guy. Um, it's not that chef's guy. It's someone else. Um, somebody great. Um, a good friend who's a, a New York person. Since he's so Nashville, maybe you don't know him. Let's see if you do. <laughs> uh, so please say hi to Rich Keller. Hey, guys. hey, Rich. What's going on, man? All right. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Hey, Fab. So, in Fab land. Yeah. So um, do you guys know each other? Uh, no, don't believe okay. me. Um, uh, I'm, Rich Keller, yeah, go ahead, fam. Go ahead. 
Rich uh, is a uh, hip hop and R and B mixer extraordinaire, as we say over there in France. Um, and um, he's coming on Pure Mix very soon, guys. So you heard it here first. We're gonna shoot with him very soon. Some really amazing, super modern hip hop stuff cool. uh, that he does. Um, and so um, I think that um, uh, uh, Reed, thank you so much. This is awesome. Thanks for uh, this yeah, stuff. Absolutely. I'm I'm gonna go um, check that out because now I'm 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 gonna spend my evening screwing with that sampler thing um, instead of watching Netflix. You know. Yeah, oh, definitely. And anybody out there that has something crazy, like, you know, jump on beards next week and like throw some stuff at us because I want to try out oh, yeah. some new stuff next week. That sounds great. Thanks, Reed. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Nice to meet you, man. Take care, man. All right, Rich. What you got hey, for us? Well, uh, if you want, I can share my screen. I've been watching what the other guys are doing. I'll share my screen. Do it. Walk through it. Let me get Do the it. share button go. Oh, embed, share the event. Wait a minute. No, 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 no. Up, uh, right above your head, there's a share screen thing. Really? Let me. Uh, yeah, this should be. If you look, um, let me see. If you look right, if you hover, <laughs> if you hover around, around your head. Yeah. Uh, it, ah, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the hovering. Okay, share screen one. Actually, uh, yeah, I'll pull that up. I'm gonna share. I'll share screen two. How about that? Okay, that's great. All right, let's see. Yeah, you got it. I'm focusing on it. All right, you got it. All right. Ah. Close this message. Cool. Now I can uh, show you. So I pulled up a few. Uh, you know, I've been. I love Saturn. It's such a versatile tool. Mm -hmm. And and lately I've been pulling it up on the on the on the master fader, as you can see here. I'm mean, I actually. Didn't want to mess up my mix. And I didn't do a save it. Yet. Mm -hmm. I pulled two up anyway. So what I'm doing here is just going into the starting with the mastering, you know, preset, mm -hmm. and then uh, where's the the very saturator. So okay. what this does, if you go to each band, right? It's got a four band, you know, uh, processor here. And uh, hang on. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, there we go. There we go. All right, we're moving again. All right. So you can click into each band. And play with each band. So, so what I do with this is I'll take. Uh, I don't know why it's moving so slow. Here we go. Uh, so you can choose. So here's the high, the, the high frequencies, right up on the right. Yeah. So I'll put this. I'll move this to a clean tube. I don't want to saturate the very highs like that. I'm gonna go okay. to the upper mids and leave my gentle saturation there. Mm -hmm. And and I'll play with this. And I'll, I'll actually I'll do the same over here. Bring this down to a clean tube. Mm -hmm. The low end, of course, the low end here depends on, I mean, it's basically pulling down below 40 here to clean up a right. mix. Within the world I'm in, I, I usually wind up pulling it halfway back up, if not more. I don't uh -huh. know why I'm lagging so badly. But the point is, when you have more sterile kind of stuff, a mm -hmm. lot of stuff you know, that has no edge, it's very clean. I get a lot of things that are either, you know, submixed or two tracks. There's a lot of stuff from, from, from Splice, you know, the mm -hmm. super clean crystalline sounds and mm -hmm. the snappy drums with the high edge and all that and getting a vocal to blend in with all that by using the saturation, just a little bit of the gentle saturator and the four band EQ that comes with each within each band. I'll have to usually have to bring this down a bit. I'll play mm -hmm. with this. Right. And, and it just allows me to just blend and heat up that area just a little bit. And it just glues everything together without having to kill the whole mix with it. You know what I mean? And I can still use my, my you know, I've got my SSL on my mm -hmm. master chain here. Like this mm -hmm. is the master chain for this song, which happens to be like a, a very you know modern pop guitar kind of live drum ballad thing. But uh, which mm -hmm. I wish I could play for you to, to turn it on and off, but we can't do that. So so yeah. I've got the SSL doing its classic, you know, four to one, you know, a little bit of smack on there. And um, then I bring this in just for a little bit of heat. And then, uh, and I lately I've also been using the uh, the master desk. It's it's I think it's a very it's a very subtle mastering tool, which it's supposed to be. That's mm -hmm. how they that's how they advertise it, and it's it's banging. I, I really like to use it, and uh, it's it you know it kills. So another another thing that I wanted to show you guys is this imperial delay here. I don't know if you're familiar with this from Boz Labs. No. Oh, wait before before you move on, oh, I think it's really oh, important. Yes. You just touched on something that hasn't really been discussed here. You are putting a saturator, which is essentially a, a, a distortion, on your mix bus, on the whole mix. Yes, yes. And 
and yeah. you still and you still I, I just want people to have really noticed noticed that that's what you're doing because it's probably going to be weird to a lot of them um so okay. how did how did you come up with that idea what was the first time you said hey i'm going to use saturn on my whole mix uh, well, because I used it on submixes, right? I'll use it on a bus, right? So if I've got a beat and I'll submix the beat in and I need to just add some gristle and some dirt to the beat. Mm -hmm. and not even dirt. I'm not even talking about audible distortion at all. I'm just talking about a pressurization where things start to warm up and blend together a little bit without mm -hmm. using compression because the compression is going to squeeze my dynamics. I don't want to squeeze the dynamics. I just want to heat up the sound a little bit. You know what I mean? So. Yep. And 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 so and then I, after using it on, on subgroups for a while, I realized, hey, yeah, why don't I just pop this over to the, my, my mix and see what it, if the vocals, see if it's fucking up the vocals completely. And mm -hmm. actually, it doesn't. I found, wow, it really actually merges them and blends them in a nice way. I mean, of course, I'm talking about staying very subtle here, you mm -hmm. know, and then also being able to just grab that high frequency band here. Let me go over back to here. Mm -hmm. Being able to grab the high frequencies. I mean, take this a dB up. Your whole mm -hmm. mix changes. All of a sudden, yeah. everything opens up. It's like, you know, in the car stereo, just let me turn the treble up 2 dB. Yeah. And you've got something that does that, and it's mm -hmm. simple and quick. So, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's this is a typical shape I'll wind up with, you know, with just the saturation, just in the high mid band, not in the highs, not in the real lows, not in the punch. I don't want mm -hmm. to distort there. That's I'll do inside the mix. But as, mm -hmm. as a mastering tool, I use mm -hmm. this as a, as a blender now. And realize I'm, you know, I'm barely going past 9 o'clock, you know, I'm, I'm within this range right here. Not not much at all. Yeah, I do something very similar with Pro MB. Yeah. Um, oh, and sugar, it's sugar, sugar, sugar too. You know. I, yeah. Yeah, sugar, sugar. The saturation on sugar is amazing. So, yeah. you know, I it's my baby. I love it. So I have Pro MB and I four bands, same thing. And then uh, when I mix this kind of music, that has to go boom. Uh, yeah. And uh, and then I use the the sugar after. But now I'm gonna try this. Uh, and so and so you said that the the mastering thing from from the, the from Dirk there from the plugin alliance you say that it's it's great what do you use it for limiting uh yes depending hang on i used it on the uh, the uh, godfather of harlem oh i'm on the wrong screen here we go godfather of harlem soundtrack cuz i was mixing okay. for a tv show for songs to fit in a tv show and i really needed to keep everything super consistent because there was going to be no mastering before this stuff was inserted into the tv show so i thought okay let me you know let me make sure that i'm being really consistent mm -hmm. with my, you know with everything so i can you know so it's even across all the shows so cool. i use this as a as a you know just a bridle to keep everything smooth and even and uh, and keep a consistent high end and low end on everything you know uh Beautiful. I, 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 keep, I keep it minimal I, I don't i don't let it go hard I, sometimes mm -hmm. i'll put an l2 after it to give it that extra little bang you know what i mean so I don't, mm -hmm. I don't necessarily use it at the end, but this track you're looking at now is a gentle track. So mm -hmm. if I'll let it be the end. Uh, I'll let a mastering engineer take it further if they need it, but it's ready to go. So, but cool. uh, another thing I want to show real quick, you good? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's, let's do this and I have, a, I have an, um, somebody you probably know coming right after you. So go ahead. Right, cool, cool, cool. All right, so yeah, so this delay I discovered just, I don't know, random, I don't know, I saw it somewhere, the Imperial delay. And what's great about it, it's a dynamic delay. It's already set up. I mean, you know, Pro Tools comes with a dynamic delay, but this mm -hmm. one here is so flexible, so fast, so intuitive, and you can create colors instantly on the fly, just moving the big knobs. It's really easy to work. You got tons of variables on there, including pitch of, you know, of both echoes, right? You got, you know, left and right, the ping and all that. And so you just got your duck right here. You just dial in how much ducking you want and the feedback, and it's, you know, instant, instant, perfect delay. It's, it's killer. You know, I so, have, so that and, and this is this is a really good plugin. Uh, but explain why you would use a dynamic delay as opposed to a regular delay. What's your vision there? Uh, well, I mean, I mean, with someone's kicking a verse, you know, or a, any verse that has gaps in it, right? You know, like they're doing, they're doing the line. It's like a call and response kind of line. You've got all these holes in it, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't want I don't want the delay to constantly be happening underneath every line while it's going. But I do want to have I want to fill the holes after the line, right? So mm -hmm. I'll just duck it down. Yeah, you know, I mean you can do this in many ways, but this is built in. This is just called dynamic delay, right? Mm -hmm. So and and this this allows for while the vocal is happening, the delay is not as prominent or it's completely off. You can duck all the way down. So mm -hmm. and then then you have to control the rise up, how fast you want it to rise up, and how long you want it to repeat, and what color you want, of course. But 
the bottom line is you, you don't have to delay tripping up the vocal, especially in rap where like they're spitting a million miles an hour. You don't want to confuse that and lose diction and clarity. So you want to have that delay just appear after they're done, you know? That, that is awesome. Um, great. So let me um, bring our next guest, um, somebody you probably know from New York because he used yeah. to be in New York. And now he's in LA, but he's a true New Yorker, um, self declared New Yorker. Um, and um, I bet you, you guys worked on records together um, a few years back. I uh, sure, uh, sure a few. Uh, yes. Uh, let's see. Let's see if he's if he's coming up. Um, and so, uh, Rich, we're going to see you on Pure Mix. We're going to we're going to uh, fill the blatant lack of hip hop and modern hard hitting low end music with you. And here's our good friend Tony. Hey! Oh, it's Roddy. What's going on, man? How how long has it been since we did the old smash by Studio Z? <laughs> yeah, man. Too long. Too long. <clears throat> well, years, man. That was a time, big studio days, wasn't it? With Michael yeah. Jackson running around, Julio Iglesias limping around. Big studio oh, days, those guys. Whew. How you been? Yeah. You good? We're both getting a little gray. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, I, I was gonna shave, and then, and then, I, and then, I saw Reed on there. I was like, uh, yeah. you know, I gotta compete with the beard now. <laughs> So, <laughs> awesome. exactly, exactly. All right, well, listen, I'll let you guys get out. It's great to see you again, Tony. I'm going to holler next time out west. You too, Rich. Right. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks, thanks Rich. Hey, I'll, call you, I'll call you next week. Cheers. Bye bye. Hi, Tone. Fab. I just, I just put a little suck in. Right. Sorry. I was, I was trying to get ready and do some, you know, vocal uh, exercises. Me, 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 me. Obviously, I'm, uh, all right. So, um, everybody, this is Tony Maserati. He makes records. Um, so, some of them are pretty good. Um, uh, they all sound good. Um, so, um, do you have something you want to show us? You know, I, first of all, fucking hell, man! This you guys are blowing me away. I got, I got a little list of, you know, all the plugins that I'm learning about today. It's going to take me the rest of next week to to even you know load them in and check them out. Uh, uh -huh. so Same. Very, 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 uh, very cool. Very exciting things that you know um, that I need to experiment with. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I wanted to show uh, show you guys a couple things that I've been experimenting with. I, you know, I'm still quite you know as we all it, it takes me sometimes weeks to to really um feel comfortable with mm -hmm. new plugs um but one one that's pretty simple um uh i'll do a little screen share here Hopefully, please do uh there's no there you go porn going on <laughs> um but uh I've been I've been playing with a couple different things lately. One, you know, my good friends at SoftTube uh, put together uh, with the Chandler folks, and you guys know that I'm a I'm a super Chandler uh, uh, user, hardware and software, as far as that goes. Um, but um, I, I've been messing with this just um, on a base. You know, one of the things that that um, we all do is we sort of chain things together, um, mm -hmm. and and the Zener is is a kind of a cool box in that, the, or the Zener Bender as it's called here, um, is just a combination of the the Zener and the Curve Bender, both of which I have hardware units of, um, mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, I, I use it for a variety of things. I really, I, I, I love the, the, the overall compression uh, that the Zener gives me. And the EQ of the Curve Bender is always a real smooth and kind of open sounding thing, uh, quite subtle at, at, at some points. Um, I used it on a bass here and, and basically it gave me a real nice, um, 
uh, uh, control. Like the bass was a, a simple live bass. Um, I think it's a, you know, a, 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 a synth played live bass sound. Mm -hmm. um, and I really wanted it to, to be up higher in the mix and, and kind of punch out. Mm -hmm. So you see I'm being pretty radical with the, with the mid range and um, uh, pushing it quite a lot uh, mm -hmm. in the upper mids here. And and a little bit of uh, a little bit higher as well on the curve bender, and then I'm um, uh, I've got the the sidechain filter on the on the Zener set at about 50 hertz, so it it, it kind of avoids that frequency in the mm -hmm. compressor, um, and I'm pushing it in quite a lot. I know we don't have sound here. not today. But uh, um, you'll see that I'm kind of grabbing it. Uh, let me see if it. So you can kind of see that I'm. I I really wanted to, you know, I want that that zener to really grab it. Um, wow. And I'm doing it a slow attack, and mm -hmm. a relatively quick release. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so, obviously if I if I take the filter out, you see I'm going to get a lot more of that. It's going right. to do a lot more compression. So I might even put that higher, mm -hmm. um, so I I get a little less com uh, less compression. Um, wow, I haven't seen this one. How old is it? Um, you know, that's a damn good question. Um, I have There's so many Fiori up on on another <laughs> on another computer over here. Um, uh, it's um it's crazy um how many plugins are coming out, and it's really hard to keep track. Of everything, but um, the guys at the South too are good friends, um, and they make great, great stuff. Really, really great stuff. Um, I'm definitely going to check that out. Yeah. What else you got? It's been out two weeks. Two weeks. That's probably why I don't know it. Yeah, the South Tube guys are, are, you know, like everybody. It's just, it's, it's quite hard to keep up with all the releases. It's um, wild, honestly. Um, I've been waiting for this one. Um, but uh, UAD has has the the curve bender yep. and the Zener as well. Yep. Um, so you can grab them there as well. Um, yep. And it's and, uh, actually the UAD. I'm not 100% sure, but usually these kinds of things on UAD are made by Softube. So it's actually the, it, you're actually seeing the Softube uh, work in UAD also. Um, do you have do you have another one you want to show? You know, I I do. I have another one. Um, uh, and then I have a surprise guest who wants to say hi. Wow, nice. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know how to stop the screen share, but uh, I, uh, I can do that you. for you. No, it's okay. Whatever you there you go. What do you, whatever you tell me. Uh, I don't know if it's of any value, but this mm -hmm. sound. You know, I'm basically blending a bunch of things together here. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I'm also I have a little parallel thing. Um, is that valid to talk about creating the pattern? Absolutely, parallel? absolutely, it's yeah. very valid. Um, so in addition to the the Zener Bender, which is on the main base, I'm also um, combining it. I'm sending it to a parallel what, what I call base crunch, which I'm just okay. using a decapitator. You can use almost any. Uh, saturation plugin or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I'm using a decapitator because I like the control that I get out of it. Um, mm -hmm. Doing a little bit of equalization, and mm -hmm. and that kind of gives me a bit of a growl. And then you know my my little uh, uh, Maserati thing just to create a bit of width as well. Share, share, share your screen again so I can see. So we, so everybody oh, okay. can see. I didn't, I didn't know I had stopped doing that. Oh, I did it. Know. I did it. My fault. You know what you're doing, man. Um, yeah. There you go. Uh, so, yeah. So I send. I've got the Zener on the main track, mm -hmm. and uh, and then I'm sending that to a parallel with the bass that I call mm -hmm. bass crunch, mm -hmm. and I've just got a little bit of a, a decapitator thing going on there, mm -hmm. which you know I'm kind of hitting it, but but yeah. Um, <laughs> Really, just trying to get a bit of a growl out of it, mm -hmm. um, 
And so what I'm doing, you can see I've got the, the Maserati at a very low level here. Mm -hmm. um, and the main base is, is our obviously carrying it. And then I can kind of add these two to taste. Now, whenever you're, you're duplicating a track, uh, mm -hmm. in this case, I'm duplicating a bass track, obviously we've, we've got to pay close attention to the phase yep. and make sure we're not losing uh, something, whether it be comb filtering or, yep. or or just sort of phase cancellation in some way. Mm -hmm. So I'm always paying close attention to that. But I found that doing it this way allows me to control this and I can really dig in and mm -hmm. sort of EQ my duplicate mm -hmm. um, much more and then combine them later. And, and I so, really enjoy doing that kind of thing. Uh, on, on, on the... Um... On the bass crunch with this, the the decapitator, you have an EQ after that. And I do. I have a little a, a little uh, uh, a Pro Q3 go. on there, doing very little. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm just sort of taking away the 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 things that get added from the decapitator that I don't like, right? Um, or that are clouding the overall clarity of the of the bass itself. And and um, and the, your bass plugin, uh, the the Waves plugin that has your name on it. Um, mm -hmm. So, what was the idea behind? How did you? What did you tell him? I want to do a plugin that does what? What did you tell him you wanted? You no, know, I had always I had always done a lot of. Um, again, I'm I'm always layering things. Yeah. And a lot of the sounds that we all mix in, you know what becomes our signatures are, are the, the stuff, the stuff behind the vocals. So it's like, you know, here's whoever, uh, vocalist and, mm -hmm. you know, and people will say, well, how do you, how do you get her vocal to sound this way? Or how do you get the guitar to sound that way? Well, mm -hmm. a lot of times it's, it's just what you got behind it. It's the little subtlety, the little nuance behind it. And you kind of add that into taste and it just it sets it off it makes that either that section come alive or it makes um you know it makes the song makes the vocalist really uh carry the the whole mix and the whole sonic landscape of the mix and so the 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 bass plug-in that i did with waves i just wanted a sort of widener that i could use on a bass um and and add that to taste and sometimes i'll i'll put a um you know i'll do this kind of thing where i'll add you know i'll add a, a decapitator um before this or after this mm. you know so i can kind of mess with that signal um afterward and and then i'll just blend it using the mix function and mm -hmm. sometimes i'll i'll automate this just for the end of a phrase you know i might i might automate this up before the bar ends mm -hmm. and just automate this you know to to pop up you know ah, um cool. just so it, it it has a bit of something that happens before that downbeat that mm -hmm. changes your ears perspective a lot of times, right. uh, I'll do a lot of automation on plugins. I spend mm -hmm. a lot of time automating plugins because, you know, the, the way that I, I, I think about things is in the same way when you're producing, arranging, um, or performing a song, you know, you're pulling the audience in, you're holding them, and then you might change your vocal tonality just to, to wake up the ear, um, mm -hmm. I do the same thing with with automation on plugins um, because I find that um, that the ear needs to be woken up, you know. And if it's not happening in the arrangement, which a good arranger producer is doing that, but um, you know, a little a little, it, it's the same as you know, dropping a snare before before a downbeat. It, mm -hmm. it shifts the ear, it makes the ear wake up and say, oh, okay, I'm paying attention. I got it. Um, I do the same thing with the automation. Um, and I can do that.
quite often I'll automate a compressor on a vocal um, to be less or more compressed. If the vocalist is pushing harder, I might lessen the threshold so that, you know, I, I don't over compress on those spots. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it just depends what I'm trying to accomplish. I don't know if that makes cool. sense. It makes absolute total sense. So um, I am um, you in your you in your own studio, right? Yeah, uh, I, I just um, I just I just uh, did a, a re uh, a remodel and reacoustic of uh, of a studio that a friend of mine uh, uh, owned and and yeah uh, worked a lot in. Who would that friend, friend be? Uh, Mr. Sheps there. Hey, Tony. <laughs> Hey Andrew, how are you? Good, good. Uh, I'm I'm not catching up. Well, I'm yeah. lazy. It, well, it's that you're not lazy because you bother to shave it. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm, I, I'm in Andrew's uh, Andrew's old space here, and uh, and so far it's 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 working out nicely. Uh, Excellent. Got it looks to go. Got to get some furniture and tweak up the. Uh, you know the, um, the acoustics a bit, but got the air conditioning working yesterday, so I was very happy. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah very good. Joe you need Sanders. air conditioning in Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah. Um, so Andrew, how are you doing? You were not. You you just you just, you just saw some light. You came in. I just crashed these things. That's all. <laughs> I, love I love it. I love it. Very nice. Um, well, um, do you want to? Did you just want to say hi to Tony, or do you want to talk about? Do you want to? Geek I out? got, we got some stuff. I always have some crap to talk okay. about. So, um, so I have, I have to apologize to our next two guests. We Andrew just came in and basically barged in. Uh, Tony, I'm be quick. Okay, quick. Uh, Tony, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to Pleasure. us. And have um, fun, Andrew. Good to see your face. Thanks for you too, Tony. I don't know how to get rid of this, but I'll try. I will Probably. take care of it for you, my friend. All right. Take care, fellas. Yes. All right. See you, Tony. Bye. What up, boss? You know, nothing. Okay. <laughs> Almost beer o'clock is what's going on. All right. See you at the pub in an hour. Yeah. Well, no, I've got a pub quiz in 15 minutes. There you go. That's Virtual that's... online pub quiz, of course. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, great. So what do you want to talk about? Well, here, I got some, some stuff. Um, Hit it. Share your screen. Screen one. Share. Switch to Pro Tools. All right, you I know, can't remember see. What, remember when your mother told you to that you had to share? This, yeah. is, this is your option to do that. Yeah, so is it working? Uh, yeah, I can see you very well. I can see your screen. OK, good. Um, I just figured, because some stuff other people were talking about. First of all, Freak Echo that mm -hmm. Vance was talking about. Just using that delay knob to get some stereo widening. I've actually used it on a mix bus before, automating it in. When you've got like a long kind of vampy bridge sort of thing where it's almost like a remix in the middle of a song, tweaking the stereo field while that happens can be cool. And Freak Echo is great at it. It's really transparent as you start to dial it up and then you realize that stuff's gone nuts. Yeah. So that's quite cool. Um, I'm going to go quick because I'm crashing. I'm taking other people's time. Um, yeah. Satin, which is the one that's showing, is really yep. good. I mean, it's built as a tape emulator, so it does harmonic distortion and things like that. Um, it also has a decent limiter. If you okay. turn on the top clip, it's actually pretty good. But what is great down here is the extra controls. So you've got control over crosstalk, wow and flutter the gap width where the head bump is, and you can see the frequency response on this graph. And then the other thing that is awesome mm -hmm. is if you want to do like Dolby stretching, you can mm -hmm. put Dolby A encoder on and no decoder, and now you're doing Dolby stretching. Wow. So it's a really powerful plugin that does a lot of stuff, and it sounds different from a lot of things. And so what do you use the on? Um, well, for a little while, it was actually my bus compressor because I was using a little bit of the tape kind of saturation and mm -hmm. then using 
it's soft limiter. And then I got sick of that pretty quick. So I use it, um, if I wanna kind of mess stuff up, I can put some wow and flutter on and then uh, mess around with the azimuth. Cause you can actually like mm -hmm. tip the head over and that'll start to comb filter. And then you can automate that if you want. So you can get some like okay. weird movement. And then the Dolby stretching thing is actually good. Um, Putting it on a send is a little tweaky because it, the, there's a bit of delay going through this. So sometimes it feels a little phasey to me, but you can also put it as an insert. And if you're getting too much of it, you could wrap this inside a blue cat patchwork and give yourself a wet dry knob if you just want a little bit. But that, like all the Kate Bush vocals is that Dolby stretch vocal, all that extra yep. really crispy top end. So, yeah. So that's good for that. Another thing for wonking stuff up, which is great, is the Good Hertz uh, Wow Control. Yeah. And like I use this preset a lot, damaged tape, and it's like a cassette deck where the tape's broken. And so you can see this phase offset jumping around and it's basically random. And okay. so it's got saturation, whatever, but it does this really cool wow and flutter. So I won't usually use this on a source, but I'll use it across the return of a reverb or something like that. So all of a sudden the uh, reverb gets these great wow and flutter dives at really random times. And it means you can use less of the reverb because it'll sort of poke out as it goes. Yep. Um, yep. All right, next. I just wanted to show the elevate uh, limiter that you were talking about because, so the way this limiter works is it's a 26 band filter bank and then limiter then a transient sort of recovery thing. And then the last stage of the limiter is that clipper that F. Reed was showing. Yep. So this clipper is how they managed to get transients back in and then clip them off. So it's the last stage of the limiter, but yep. it's expand and it's awesome. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. thanks for showing me that. Um, it's, it's really cool. It's a really great alternative. Um, yeah, and just really transparent, or you can mess with it if you want. I mean, you can go nuts with the drive and the transient emphasis and stuff like that. But yeah. mainly for me, it just doesn't sound like a whole lot while it's doing a lot, which yeah. is good. It's a, you can definitely get more out of it, um, more level out of it than you can even with the Oxford or whatever. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. And it does it does true peak limiting, so it does take care of intersample overs and blah, yeah. blah, blah. So... Yeah, it's yeah. good. Um, and then the last, well, there are two. So this one I just wanted to show, because this is the the Eventide T-Verb. So this is the live room at Hansa Studios in Berlin. Mm -hmm. But I've actually been using this on my mix bus, dialed down to either 10 or 15% wet, mm -hmm. and then take down the far mics a little bit. I usually take the, the reverb time down. And what happens is you're overdriving the plug-in because mm -hmm it's the end of the mix bus chain. So you mm -hmm. get a little bit of distortion and a little bit of kind of glue by mm -hmm. having this tiny bit of reverb. Mm -hmm. So I use that, no compressor, no gate, nothing like that, just mm -hmm. a bit of EQ on the return and then just dial in a little bit of it. And I think this gives me back some of the glue I don't get because I don't use bus compression anymore right. at all. I never have a bus compressor. All I've got on my um, mix bus really is EQ at this point until yep. I get to the limiter. So this gives me a little schmutz. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last thing I wanted one to thing, mention. One thing, would, sorry to interrupt. One, uh, that trick of using that reverb on your mix bus is gonna show up on your next videos on Pure Mix. It's all explained in a couple of mixes we shot in December and they're gonna start coming out soon. So people were yeah. like, what? you know, what is well, he doing? The concept came because I was mixing something and it just felt dry and I'm not very okay. good at reverb. But then I remembered mastering reverb was a thing. So people put reverb on the entire mix. I didn't want it to be that obvious, but mm -hmm. it worked really well. And I used it a lot. I mean, it, it's only the tiniest bit, but probably 80 or 90% of the mixes I do. It's in my template off and I bring it on and it almost always helps. It's good. And then the last set of plugins I wanted to talk about, which are awesome, but there's no point in showing them on the screen, is mm -hmm. there's a company called Expert Sleepers, and they make modular stuff, so Eurorack things, but they also make Eurorack interfaces, so like ADAT to eight ins and eight outs that go in your Eurorack, but then they have some fucking awesome plugins where you can do stepped LFOs inside of Pro Tools or 
envelope followers inside of Pro Tools and then spit out control voltages through your their hardware, or you can use any DC coupled interface. Because if it's DC, if it's not DC coupled, then it gets rid of the control yeah. voltages. But if it's yeah. DC coupled, I may be getting that backwards. I can never. No, no, it has, to be, it has to be DC coupled. Yeah. And so then uh, you can use that as control voltages in your modular or take control voltages from your modular and actually record them into Pro Tools, edit them, and spit them back out. So those plugins are awesome if you want to get your modular involved but not have it be the total mess that it usually is. Yes. And for those of you who didn't understand a word of what Andrew says, you just don't know the meaning of life yet, but it will come to you later. <laughs> Um, because I wanted to go quick uh, in that way, so that's all I got. Mo modulars are the meaning of life. Let me invite our next guest so you can say hi before you go back to do your quiz. Hold on one second. Um, he's he said, uh, he said he was gonna come, and here he is. Hey, Daryl hello. Thorpe. What's hey, up? Daryl, my friend. How are you? Good, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> stuck inside. Yeah, yeah. How different is that from your normal life, though? Not that different. Well, I, I think it's more about the, even if I'm doing something from home, if I have a lot of recalls or things like that, or just busy print work where I don't need to go in the studio to actually hear stuff and just put my cans on to make a small tweak. It's like, well, I usually start my day with, I'm going to get in the car and drive up to Starbucks and because I live a half mile from the ocean. Even though I don't go into the ocean, it's still nice to go, oh, there it is. Let me get my coffee now and go to work. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I do. And I'm not doing that right now, which is so depressing. Yeah, and just, Andrew can't, can't go to the pub. You know, this is just like, yeah. this, is, this just got to end. It's the, worst. Yeah. it's the worst. But we're getting through it. I think the not dying thing is more important. So. The not dying exactly. thing is more important than okay. going down to the beach and flying kites for a half hour. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, Andrew, thanks a lot for joining us in Palm 2. Uh, thanks for having me. On. Sorry to take some well, and time. And once here. again, I learned something new from Andrew when he talks about a plugin that I own that I use all the time. Wait a minute, it does that? What? Oh, <laughs> of course it does. And I didn't. Thank you, Andrew. All learning all day, all day, all every day. day every day. Yeah. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks, guys. See ya. Thanks, Andrew. Cheers. Hi, Fab. How are you? Sub Daryl. How's how's um, life stuck in New York City? Well, do, do you want the, the, the short answer? Not Besides the hell of grocery shopping, it's not that different from my regular life. Let's be real. Um, so um, I just, you know, I wake up in the morning, I mix records, I cook, I go to bed. <laughs> right. Pretty much it. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, that's it. Um, yeah. So um, so what are you going to show us, my friends? I have three plugins to show. Uh, I was thinking about where is the share screen because it's different from here. There it's it is, share awesome. screen. Yeah. There you go, share. Found it, share, and then I'll go here. Um, okay. Yeah, so I've got, I decided, well, Andrew was talking about another good Hertz plugin, which I haven't dove into at all, but I figured I would start with one of my favorite new plugins made by Good Hertz, which is called the Volf, V-U-L-F compressor. And once again, for the, the folks at home who are watching this, um, I would just say, write it down, because there's a couple of cool uh, videos that, the, that Good Hertz posted online about what it can do. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, reading the brief description about it, apparently it was sort of based upon the Boss SP-303 sampler. Yep. yep. Um, and it's apparently it's apparently supposed to be the similar algorithm, but just in plug-in form. And of course, they expanded upon it. Yeah. Um, but what I found is it's just a crazy, first of all, parallel compressor in, in the extreme over-the-top yep. uh, mode. It can do subtle, but it's when you put it on and you just go, you put it up to 11 and you're just like, uh -huh, hello, where have you been all my life? It's pretty amazing. Right for that aspect, just to play with the compression. Um, and it also does tape emulation, or it's more of cassette. Yes. Grade tape emulation, which I don't know if you guys, um, I would run uh, like the, one of the Denon tape decks, you could hit that thing hard and then there was it was actually four headed, so you could come off the repro head of it yep. and put it back in and it was, Sometimes you get some really crazy effects out of that. Yeah. But um, 
Um, so it's kind of like the similar thing is there. Um, and I've also been using it a lot on, um, example, Wurlitzer or Rhodes. Those mm -hmm. are the two piano key instruments that I've always had a hard time trying to fit into a mix. It's just something about their tonal characteristic that doesn't want to sit well, unless it's a very stripped down track. Um, and I found using the vault compressor on those really helps them just push that upper mid forward in a way that, oh, wow, now it's, it's really, it has its own place and it's not fighting with the guitar anymore and I can hear what the part is. So that's great. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. I, you know, I discovered it through, I forget what, it, well, I discovered it because some producer sent me a session with it on and I didn't have it. So I bought it. And, um, yeah. And then, yeah, no. uh, uh, which is the way, you know, this is the way I discover new plugins right now is, um, is, you know, oh, what's this? I don't have yeah. this. Okay. Let me buy it. Um, and, um, uh, I use it on trap hats. It's ah. so dope. It makes those, it basically lets those hats, like all the Lolo Zui record, the whole album, all the trap hats, all of it is all the wolf compressor on stun. There's one thing about this compressor though. You got to turn the noise off. Yep. Because yep. otherwise you can't hear yourself think it's so noisy. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's great. I'm glad. I'm glad you 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 found it. It's it's a little bit under the radar, but it's re and it's a little expensive, but it's really good. Yeah, it is a very. I would I would highly recommend going on their uh, their website and just checking out because the, the I think it's the one of the inventors. He does a little drum breakbeat loop in his in his flat. Yeah, and he's just like he turns it on and off, and it's like whoa. whoa. Yeah, and it's, it's a yeah. He's part of that Wolfpack crowd of crazy musicians that do crazy stuff. Um, Good for them. It, yeah, it's great. What else you got, my friend? Well, so I was talking about uh, we were talking about Dolby mm -hmm. stretch, and I figured why not talk about the Overloud dopamine, which is mm -hmm. their copy of a Dolby A unit for Parallel. Um, especially because he was talking about the Kate Bush thing. And I think the most infamous one that I didn't know about until recently is the BG's How Deep Is Your Love. Yep. That vocal sound is Dolby A printed on the multi-track. They just sang in, they printed it to the tape. So when they mixed it, it would just be that. And it's such an amazing, I don't know if that song would be as, luxurious if it didn't have that Dolby A treatment that you hear every time. It's such mm -hmm. a iconic tonal quality and, and, it, and, it, and it is part of the Bee Gees themselves, but it's just sort of a, just an engineering, why, how they thought to do that and include that in that particular track was just such an amazing concept. Mm -hmm. So I started mixing um, Casey Musgrave's Christmas album, which mm -hmm. came out uh, uh, Black Friday of last year. And mm -hmm. also that it was that Christmas special on Amazon may or may or not have seen it or heard about it, whatever. But, um, uh, the producer told me, he's like, dude, just to warn you, Casey likes her vocals ridiculously bright, just FYI. Mm -hmm. And I go, well, I got the treatment. So I immediately just started mixing with the dopamine as a parallel to get her vocals just to be super, super bright, open and airy. And um, when apparently when she, I never talked to her directly, so I didn't know, but the producer was like, man, when she heard the mixes, especially her vocals, she was like, dude, this is perfect. Thank you. And um, so she was really, really happy with the outcome right away. You know, something um, that a lot of people don't know is the um, the high band in Sugar is, uh, is a Dolby Stretch. Oh, see, one. Uh, <sighs> so the, the high band, uh, the straight one, is is a straight Dolby stretch thing exactly as is, uh, and then um, and then but without the uh, without trying to imitate the circuitry of the Dolby itself, just the fact that it it brings the the high end like this in a control manner, it's exactly the same thing, and then um, uh, the uh, the one that's called bright this uh, hold on man it's my plugin I don't even know the names. Uh, <laughs> You know, when you use it so much, you don't look at the settings. Yeah, anymore. yeah, you just you just right. do what you got to do. Uh, yeah. On this, the, um, the second thing um, uh, next to it is actually that with a little bit of an enhancer, a little bit of maximizer, like a little bit of BBE vibe mm -hmm. on it. But, but oh. 
but the, the high and all the other bands, the principle was to try something that would give you the same feeling and the same benefits as a Dolby stretch, but in the other um, in the other spec uh, range of the spectrum. So shine in the high end, shine is a straight Dolby stretch exactly, and then excite and sight. Uh, the excite is a little bit of an effects like BBE type added onto that process. Oh, okay. Um, would, so would you, uh, so Fab, the question for the listeners out there, would you recommend doing this as an actual insert on the vocal track, or would you say yeah. a parallel as well? Or You can, or do, you can do both because we, we spend a lot of time making sure it's, um, it's phase accurate. Okay. Um, so, um, but I use it on insert. Yeah. So, so sorry to hijack your segment, but that's. No, uh, no, not at all. I mean, dude, it's always, because for me, it's, it's, Hey, the dopamine works on track A, but then I got another artist, and for some reason the dopamine doesn't sound as good. So let me try sugar and try yeah, the, sure. the yeah. air on sugar. Oh, this is sitting right. This is great. This yeah. is perfect. Yeah. It's just cool. another. It's just a different screwdriver for the for the job, yeah. right? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, so what's that blue thing that I don't know? Okay, so the blue one is called Tokyo Dawn. Hold on, let me look at my so I don't butcher their. Yeah, it is. It's called Tokyo Dawn Records or Tokyo Dawn Labs. If you oh, just yeah, go yeah, on, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's their mastering compressor. If you just go on their website and sign up for an account, you can download this for free. Okay. They make a uh, more an accessible version or more features, should I say, is the cost or paid version. Mm hmm. Um, but quite honestly, if you're looking to do, uh, if you've got a mix going on, uh, jazz, let's say you got a jazz record, just mm -hmm. perfect, maybe a perfect example, and you want a little smidge of control, but you really don't want any coloring whatsoever, mm -hmm. this is a great go-to guy to try with first. Um, just huh. a couple, half dB, just a little squeeze to tighten it up, but it's really very clear. Uh, you don't hear any coloring. I mean, quite honestly, usually when I mix like pop stuff, I'm looking for an SSL or a Neve. I'm looking for color, but there are times in our, uh, where we get things coming across our desk, so to speak. It's like, well, I don't think this needs, it needs to be tightened, but I don't want any extra added to it. I just want it to be very clear and, and precise. So. Uh, just letting the guys know out there, hey, if you're looking for, you know, once again, if you want more stuff to scroll through, can't go wrong with this guy. <laughs> I'm going to go check it out. Uh, <laughs> those guys are very creative. Uh, they do. They're they're cool. I like how they market their stuff. I never listened to it. So now, now I have to go listen. I know they're, um, I know they're, um, uh, how do you stop sharing screen? Uh, I can do it for you. Oh, cool. Um, I know their. I haven't tried their EQ. I know their EQ is very nice as well, as far as like a mastering grade. Same thing, very clean. That's good as well. But that's it. Okay, great. Well, yeah. let me uh, let me in invite um, our last guest uh, for today. You don't know who it is. Well, you're about to no. find out. I think you guys great. know each other. Hopefully, uh, you you both Los Angeles. I tried to put all the Los Angeles peeps. Last, so that I don't drag anybody out of bed. Even though, even though Andrew, uh -huh. oh, you know, Alan, I've never. Hello, Alan, I've never met you. I only, I of course know hey, everyone. You. Greetings, everyone. Let me show Greetings. you my Dolby plugin, okay? Okay. Yeah, that's my real, Dolby plugin. Yeah, it's the real thing laying on the floor. <laughs> and I just, I, I jam shit through it. I back mm -hmm. it up a thousand twenty-seven samples. It lines up perfectly. Really? And Bob is your uncle. But I also What's your have favorite? All the uh, I have all the plug-in ones too. I have the audio thing and and all that stuff. So, uh, what's you know, your favorite thing to right. run through your hardware? So. Different screwdriver every time. Yes. Why do I have little tiny images of you in a big black screen? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Uh, today um, we woke up and the internet said, "I'm going to make you the miserable." Yeah. <laughs> Terrible. Uh, Actually got an email from the internet. Uh, all caps said, "Today is the day I'm going to make you miserable." So yeah, here's my here's my other plugin right there. That's the dog. That's my love plugin. Whenever I need Aww. a little more love, Aww. I bring him in the room with me. <laughs> That's awesome. 
All right. That that plugin never fails. It has no new versions. Yes, but uh, it eats a lot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, Daryl, thank you so much. Nice to meet you, Daryl. Nice to meet you, Alan. Cheers, man. And uh, see you very soon on PureMix. All right. Bye, guys. Cheers. Um, Alan. Man, can I tell you how much I'm learning? Uh, I mean, it's just incredible that all these great, you know, Tony Ma is my hero. Mm -hmm. He's got, mm -hmm. you know, so many great tricks up his sleeve, so many great sounds. And Andrew, you know, but all the people, a lot of these guys, you know, Vance, I know that uh, I'm going to talk a lot about some that same company. Yeah. So it's good to hear that, you know, that's supported across the different types of music, you know? Yeah. PSP, PSP is awesome. Uh, and PSP is and quite awesome. Yeah, Anthony is great. He's also the tallest man in the plugin business. He's like far. eight foot six. Yeah, this guy. You never, you never cannot find him at the Nam show because you just look above. I, if you've ever been to Tokyo, it's a really weird feeling. But you know, they, there is a tendency for for Asians to be a little bit shorter. So mm -hmm. when you walk across the street, it's a mass of people, and you can see all of the, you know, European people because they're a head taller. And Anthony is like, you know, two heads taller than everyone. Absolutely. And absolutely. And a total sweetheart. So I was able to uh, talk to him and I have the plugins right. um, on my system. My system's super finicky, but we can show the interface. Yeah, and I mean, that's all. I I'm not going to play anything. I just I wanted to talk about them because they're, they're some of their newest stuff. And um, the things I love about them, um, there's, there's the two. We'll start with the multiband. Okay, so uh, old timer, right? Right, the old timer multiband, and so let me share my screen one second. Uh, and both of these plugins are interesting because they're both zero latency, you know, uh -huh. which is tremendously uh, great. Um, in the world of multiband, if you if you want to, one of the interesting things about multiband, Andrew Sheps will tell you this, is it's very hard to use a multiband in parallel because you tend to because it's got three bands, it just there's a lot of delay compensation that goes on. And it doesn't tend to add up when you try to use it as a parallel compressor. Yeah, this absolutely. guy actually works in parallel, uh -huh. which is really nice. Although it also has parallel processing, you know, blending built into it. Mm -hmm. But what I found with this is, if you've ever experienced that tube tech multiband yep. compressor, this it's is sort of that style of really kind of like smooth, smooth, gentle contouring of shapes. So mm -hmm. if you if you uh, if you want to um, use it on percussion and you want to just really get your low end a little bit more under control, you could just hit a little bit more compression on that. It's got really wide cross um, uh, frequency crossovers so mm -hmm. that it's, it's very phase linear mm -hmm. and it's just a fantastic sounding unit. It's one of those things, you know, like a lot of plugins sound better the minute you plug them in because they're just louder, you know? Yep. And this guy is that. And and uh, so it, it takes a lot for me to get past the fact that it just sounds great the minute I instigate it and actually get into tweaking it. Right. But I do love it. Um, yeah, that, that, um, that tube tech hardware unit is fabulous. Yeah, uh, that is a fabulous. I actually owned one for a long time. Okay. And, uh, and would use it on my stereo bus. I didn't realize that uh, somebody made a software version of that like this. It's great. Well, it's That's... not exactly that, but it's sort of based on the same topology as that. So <laughs> if you like that unit, you'll you'll like this. It's sort of that. That's the thing you could get. Like actually, this kind of works as a like when you're if you put it on your mix and your high end is getting a little bit edgy and stuff. You want to control that high end a little bit. You can mm -hmm. just tap the compressor on the high end a little bit, and mm -hmm. then just blend back and you sort of do that, which is. I wanted to mention about the decapitator. One of the simple, subtle uses for it is um, if you use the tone control and just back it off at 12 o'clock towards 11 o'clock, yep. it is a fantastic smoother. It's it just amazing. takes anything that's harsh and de-harshifies it a little bit. And believe yep. it or not, I end up using that on orchestras and strings a lot huh. without, using, without adding any uh, distortion or any sort of harmonic content. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes when it gets a little harsh, there's a lot of tools now, but that's sort of one of my old standbys for just mm -hmm. taking down a little bit of that harshness. Oh, I'll try that. You know what I use? I use the Studer, the UAD Studio 800. Yeah. And now you also have the Soothe, the OEK Sound Soothe, yep. which is brilliant at doing that. And the Golf yep. Oss is brilliant at doing that. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of new tools in the, um, you know, in the bank now. But, you know, yep. going back to some of the classic things that I used yep. to use, Back in the early days of Pro Tools, you know, mm -hmm. the early 2010s. This is, 
This is very interesting. I'm going to check it out. There, there yeah. goes my uh, my discretionary time again. Yeah, sorry about that. This 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 broadcast is basically yeah. There you go. So this guy, if you you see the little circles on the right hand side, they look like two little gears, a small gear and a big gear. Yeah. Just click on it. Uh, wait, Protos is uh, puking. One second. Uh, so so this is this is this. It's a beautiful channel strip. That gives you yes. sort of uh, different colors of input saturation. No, there's a way to click on it where you can, there you go. So, so, and then this is a work in progress that they're doing. This has been released. Each mm -hmm. of these has three different versions of the compressor, three different versions of the high pass, low pass, mm -hmm. and three different versions of the EQ. And they're all very beautiful. Some of them are a little bit more drastic than others. Some of them are a little more nevy. Some of them are yeah. a little more politicky. I, I'm not one that really cares what it's modeled after because if I right. sort of go into that mode in my brain, then I, st I stop thinking and I stop listening. Yeah. It's very easy for me to stop listening. This so looks, I just um, kind I of mess around. Sorry? Yeah. This looks really amazing. What have you been trying it on? Uh, everything. I've been, you know, I'm sort of at that stage with it now. I'm actually mixing a track now where I used it. You know, now in Pro Tools, you get folders, right? So yep. I'm using it on my drum folder. So it's actually across the entire drum mix because I have everything. Wow. Yeah. So it's work. It's working great. Um, and I've tried it on vocals quite a bit on vocals. I'm just trying, I'm, you know, I'm sort of figuring out where it's going to sit because PSB has another plugin, another EQ that is part of my day-to-day -day work, which is the <laughs> E27, yep. which is basically based on this Avitas plugin. Yeah. Avitas EQ. It's, yep. my, it's one of my favorite EQs. And, and, um, I use that quite a bit. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out where I would use that and where I would use this. And yeah. I believe that Anthony and Adam, the guy that designed this, are still working on more, you know, uh, Modules. things to put in here, how to expand upon it. It's sort of their version of their 500 rack. So it's going to be very nice. You know, yeah. um, I, I also have... zero latency. Oh, well, even nicer. Yeah, um, crazy, right? Yeah, this is this is this is awesome. Um, I, I was not aware of this again, for the same reason, there's so many plugins and there's not that, you know, everybody thinks I get this a lot. It's like people send me their plugins. Oh, you have all these plugins. And, um, and the thing is that it takes a long time to test plugins because if you integrate them in your work to integrate them into your workflow under pressure, um, it's not really, you can't really screw up. We don't have the chance to screw up. So, uh, it's very hard for me to try new stuff. Yeah. Well, um, now, because now is one of those times where that opportunity is here because I, I, I the stuff I'm working on now, it's all been postponed. Right. And I, I have the resources. So I'm just mixing. I'm, I'm working on, an, on a fantastic album. I'm actually working on a Boy George song right now. I have another I'm doing a Moby album and um, and none of this is due yet. So it's it's giving me an opportunity to really play with play. sound. That's great. And, That's and, and, awesome. and the beauty is when I get it wrong, I love getting it wrong. You know, I love going down a rabbit hole and going at the end of it going, that sounds like shit mm -hmm. because it's just as, it's just as informative to me to get it wrong as it is to get it right a lot of the time. Well, it is, it is a demonstrated thing that, um, that you learn humans learn better from failure than from success. Well, it's not, you know, it's the Thomas Edison thing. It, it, it's not really failure. It's just didn't work. There's yes. a difference between failing and not and something not working. So, yes, you know, that is a very um, good way to put it. Right, but there's so many great plugins. These smaller companies. I mean, there's the, you know, obviously. Oh, thanks for uh, commenting on the bug mix. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, uh, you know, the Waves has some amazing stuff. All these, you know, the new Apogee plugins are great. But it's great to support these smaller companies. Uh, good Hertz, that Wolf compressor. It's awesome. Man, oh man. And I use their pan pot a lot because it, I can pan without, by using delay. I've always used delay to pan, but now I can do it more elegantly, sort of mixing a little bit of delay, a little bit of level, a little bit of spectral panning so that my panning doesn't feel, you know, mono separated as much as it feels integrated in. You know, for my stuff, what, what really turns me on is that sound staging. You know, it's, it's, a, it's probably why I'm not a great pop mixer. It's, it, it's, it's I just love feeling that i'm in i'm sitting there in the middle of 
a performance, whether it be an orchestral film score type of performance or a record mm -hmm. where I feel engaged in it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when I lose that kind of binaural sensation by having right. a mono sound hard right or hard left, it mm -hmm. takes me out of that sort of kind of fantasy world. I know exactly what you mean. So can you expand a little bit on what you just said about how you, you, you I'm not familiar with that compressor, with that um, panner that Wolf makes. Let me go so look for it. It's not Wolf, it's it's Good Hertz. And if you go there, there's, yeah, it's, um. let me just tell you exactly what it's called. Uh, let me find the Good Hertz website. Um, uh, it's called the, um, it's called the Pan Pot. What a name. Here, I'll, <laughs> just, I'll just turn my screen around. Can you see it? Uh, let me change the focus here. There we go. Uh, not. It is. Uh, it's a little. I mean, it's fuzzy here. I don't know what you guys see. The, the pen part. Okay. And right. so, what so the, if you see, there's four things. There's level, delay, spectral, and phase. And then okay. you have a pan or left and right. So okay. when I pan it, now all I'm doing is doing a mono pan. But if I take the level down and use delay to do the pan, I still get the sensation of it being at the right. But it's mm. using the Haas effect to make that happen. So it's adding ah. a delayed signal to the left. And then mm -hmm. the same thing with using some frequency content. And then phase content, which I don't use. I'm just not a big lover of that sound. But mm -hmm. um so, so that's it's it's been an interesting way to do something I've done for a long time, by mm -hmm. um, by uh, you know just making it a built-in plugin. So I'm very, I like right. that a lot. Right. Yeah, um, it's funny. But, it's like over time, all these companies and us included come up with uh, basically all integrated, right? Stuff that used to be uh, a combination of tricks. Right. Yeah. Well, Clear Mountain's domain. Anyone who takes a look at that, there's. Bob has basically given you all his coolest settings of the last 35 years. I unfortunately can't use it because I, I just, I, it, it's, I have to work harder than that. I just, if I do that, I just always feel like I left something on the table, you know? So, <laughs> but uh, I do enjoy listening to it. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. But the, you know, all these small companies now are doing such amazing stuff. They're yep. really, you know, super high end. And now, you know, with 2020 and everything being 64 bit, Mm -hmm. um it, it sounds it, you good know, too it sounds good and that you know i want to go back to something someone said about the fab filter saturn why that is such a great harmonic um uh, plugin because it runs in a super high resolution oversampling mode so yep. all of the artifacts of its of its distortion don't get redirected back down into yep. the audible range and if you want to know more about that there's you know if you go on their website there's actually yeah, uh, a video about that. that is it's key. worth watching. Yeah, that is key because there's a lot of plugins that, um, um, how do I say? It's just like when, when MIDI came in, uh, people who should not have been made, making music had access to tools that allowed them to make music. Right. Um, when Juice came in, Juice is the, the architecture that lets anyone build plugins if they have a little bit of sense. Um, uh, there's a lot of plugins that are very creative, but but that maybe not, or th that you have to watch out for because the tone the tone of it can be really heinous. Right. Um, right. And so uh, it's nice to know that uh, people like the Fab Filter guys they really pay attention to they the do. quality uh, of they the do. sound, and which is why you know the Pro Q2 and Pro Q3 are basically the number one EQ plugin right now. Right. Absolutely. Uh, it's you know. I have my Pro Q2. I don't actually use the Pro Q3 because I don't use the dynamic EQ on it. And mm -hmm. I find the Pro Q2 that eats up a little bit less DSP and stuff like that. And I just sure have that. a preset with seven frequencies already set. So I can just grab and, you know, go, oh, I'm hearing something there. Let me clean that. I'm hearing something there. Let yep. me clean that. And yeah, that's usually the first thing on. I pushed the Geekery to, um, to make the preset uh, map well to the, um, the Pro Tools dock uh, hardware controls. Right. Uh, so right. that was that was very nice. Yeah, they, they, it's it, these are good times. Basically, the, the way you know people ask me all the time, and what I say is like, right, you're so lucky. Right. Um, I agree. To be, to be making records right now because you for eight bucks you can get tools that used to cost a half million dollars. Um, and you know, my thing is that that not. I don't mean to cut you off, but go ahead. Uh, my point is. You, I had a director that I worked with, Robert Rodriguez, who said that we have to, that, you know, modern technology is giving us the chance to work at the speed of thought. And, yep. and, uh, and that's just a fantastic thing. You know, yep. um, everyone, 
has the same tools I have. I, I might have a few more of them, but basically mm -hmm. there isn't, I don't have, there's no special kind of Alan Myerson, Tony Maserati, Andrew Sheps sort of tools that we now have that you don't have. So what mm -hmm. it really comes down to is creativity and, uh, and your exactly. ear and a sense of, which is kind of scary, which is why I've never ever sent a mix in to one of these blind mix offs because I'm, I, I'm afraid that I would crash and burn. You know, I don't want to be the guy that comes in ninth. You know what I mean? Yeah. It wouldn't be good for I, I the, don't, for I, the I don't career. Think it would, but I think that never know. Just, uh, I think that what you just said is the key. And that's why we have to be, I mean, current circumstances notwithstanding and uh, the, the whole um, revenue system notwithstanding. We are, this is great. Anybody who comes up and has a laptop and and a few bucks can or use all free plugins. If they have the ideas and the, the artistic sense and the, and the the creativity, they can do something right as good as what you and I can do with our with our we all have the same system. So now it's hello, now, hello, hello, Phineas and Billy Eilish. I mean, exactly that's a, that's a laptop and a hundred and fifty dollar microphone, you know. Exactly. And you know. so it's about it's back, not back. It's never been like this. It's about the creativity and it's about the humans. It's not about the gear or the budget. It is. And 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 uh, it's about a little bit of fearlessness. It's a little it's about. And I think Andrew Shapps is sort of the master of that because he's a guy that's putting reverbs on mix buses. And he's a guy that, you know, for years was using 31 band limiters on his mix bus and decided mm -hmm. that now he's going to mix without anything on his mix bus. And, you know, mm -hmm. just when I started catching up with him and doing what he's doing now, he's doing something else. You mm -hmm. know, it's just so funny. My new thing is I have a little set of aura tones in my in my home studio and I can't get it right until I'm on the aura tones. My yep. H and C sound great, but until I'm on the aura tones, I just don't really know what I'm listening to anymore. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, that's have, been an interesting. I have the same ones. I have, you know, my aura tones, my first ever gig, um, uh, I basically forced myself onto it. There was no pay, but the guy felt the guy felt so bad that, that I worked so hard. Um, I was like I don't know, fifteen or something, and and didn't have a budget to pay me. He said, "Here, uh, you know, take this," and he gave me a pair of Orotones, and and I still have them, and I still I still wow. mix on them. Yeah, I don't have them in my quarantine setup because there's no amp down here. But, uh, I remember um, when I got when I got the Brian Ferry record back in 1985, and uh, they called me up to mix. They gave me fifteen thousand dollars to mix the whole album in 1985, which for okay. me was a fortune in those days, you know. And uh, yes, I took that fifteen thousand dollars and I spent sixteen thousand five hundred dollars on gear. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best thing. I would I would never do such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I still remember I bought an API 5502, a Neve 33609, two PCM 42s. I I don't have them anymore. I sold them at one point because it just it's a different world today, but uh but it was uh yep. the first, my first my biggest record I got at that point in my career. I spent every penny and then some on gear. That is so funny. I love it. That is, that is great. All right. So we are grossly morbidly over time. So um, thank you so much, Alan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Um, and thanks to all the other uh, guests, Vince Powell, Fred, everything, Rich Hip and Rich Keller, Tony Maserati, Daryl Thorpe, and special unplanned appearance from Andrew Sheps. Um, thank you, everyone, for watching. Um, Today was a difficult internet day, but I thought I hope you got uh, good information out of it and you got a lot out of it. Uh, I know that my weekend is officially ruined. All I'm going to do is uh, watch this and go buy those plugins and check them all out one by one. Um, thanks a lot, and we'll see you here on Monday for Andrew Shep's show uh, at 2.30 p.m. EST, which is whatever, 723 p.m. metric. All right. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thanks again, Alan. Ciao, everyone.